Let's talk about combustion. I believe last time we met, we balanced a combustion equation, didn't we? Okay. What do you remember about combustion equations? It always contains oxygen. Okay. Oxygen is always needed for combustion. It creates what? Right. It always produces water and CO2. CO2 is the gas. Water is usually vapor because it's, this is happening at a high temperature, so it vaporizes. And then you have to have some fuel source, right? You have to burn something. A lot of times it's a hydrocarbon, meaning it's a compound containing carbons and hydrogens, but it can be other things as well. So this is what a combustion equation always looks like. What's the first one? Please? Fuel. Let's work this one. Let's see, I had one written. Uh, combustion of a 5.50 gram sample of a hydrocarbon. produces 18.59 grams of CO2 and 3.81 grams of water. Determine the empirical formula of the hydrocarbon. Do you see that we're starting out with 5.50 grams of this fuel source? And this fuel source is a hydrocarbon. So y'all, it contains carbons and hydrogens only. Now, because of the way a combustion works, I'm gonna burn all of this fuel. All the carbon that's contained in the fuel, it has to come out in the CO2. So if I know how much CO2 I make, and I do, I know I make 18.59 grams of CO2, then I need to figure out how much carbon is there, how many moles of carbon are in that 18.59 grams, because that's where all the carbon ends up. The other component of my fuel source is hydrogen. What happens to all the hydrogen in my fuel? I capture it right here. I capture it in the water. See, because I have measured how much water I make, 3.81 grams of water. And so that can tell me how many moles of hydrogen did I start with. Now, you'll look at this and you'll say, I started with 5.5 grams of fuel and I ended up with over 20 grams of product. How did that happen? because I didn't say anything about how much oxygen I started with, right? We've been feeding oxygen into this process so that it would combust, okay? So this 3.81, I've got to get the hydrogen out of it, but y'all, the 3.81 contains the hydrogen and the water. I mean, the hydrogen and the oxygen. The 18.59 contains the carbon and the oxygen. I just have to get the carbon out of it. So let's start with the carbon, the 18.59 grams. That's how much CO2 you have. What's the first thing you're going to do with 18.59 grams? Convert it to moles. Convert it to moles. So set that up. 18.59 grams of CO2, convert it to moles of CO2. Okay, so 18.59 grams of CO2. Do you all have the molar mass of CO2? 44.01? 44.01 grams of CO2. Any questions on that conversion? Okay. What units cancel out right here? 
grams of CO2. So if I solve this, if I calculate it, I'm left with some number in terms of moles of CO2. But what did I want? What number am I going for out of that 18.59? The carbon. I'm trying to figure out the carbon. Do you know how much carbon is in CO2 on a mole basis? Based on the formula CO2, in every one mole of CO2, isn't there one mole of carbon? So this ratio here, one mole of C per one mole of CO2, I get that from the formula, but the reason I have to do that, guys, is so the moles of CO2 cancels, and it'll tell me how many moles of carbon I have. It is one to one, so mathematically it's not gonna change, but it's the number that we originally had, but we still have to put that step in for the units. Questions yet? What do y'all get for your answer? What? What do y'all get? 0. 0.4224? Mm -hmm. Okay, 0. 0.4224 moles of carbon. So now we've figured out the carbon. Looking back at our what we have to do, what is what do you think the next step is gonna be? Find the moles of hydrogen out of the 3.81 grams. Same process we just did for CO2, but the numbers are different. So watch what you're doing, and y'all try to set that one up. Okay, so we're trying to get the hydrogen out of the water information. So I know I have 3.81 grams of water. And I went around and looked. Most of you guys had this first step, a mole of water is 18.02 grams of water, right? Mm -hmm. And the last steps where I told you to be careful because it's H2O. So there's two moles of hydrogen in every one mole of water because of the subscript of two on the water. Did y'all catch that? Good. What'd y'all get when you calculated it? Yeah, 0.4229 moles of H something. Okay. Okay. Um, what do you see right here? When you compare the moles of C and the moles of H, when you look at those numbers, I mean, technically your last step, right, is always to divide by the smallest. Mm -hmm. But when, when you do that, what are you going to get? One. You're going to get one and one. What did this question ask you for? Empirical. The empirical formula. What is the empirical formula of the compound? CH. Okay, there's one carbon for every hydrogen. Questions on anything on that? Go for it. Mm -hmm. No? You act like... Because you do all this work to get any of these two letters. <laughs> right. Like right. a whole page of work for two letters. <laughs> Chemistry's like A whole that page, though? Well, you must write big. Is that